a war being waged by two sides for the soul of the critical role community i'm talking about the haters versus the stands for example the rules lawyer isn't she supposed to have advantage on that while it is their personal D, D friend campaign there's really no difference between this and watching game of thrones how's it going guys welcome back to fraud on the telly in this video i'm going over some grievances i have with the critical role community especially after uh the last few series of rather controversial critical role episodes as always if you enjoyed the video we'll learn something new make sure you elder splats that like button cast revivify on the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that tiny bell to never miss a video before we get started i just want to address two things one this video will have some campaign three spoilers especially for the last few episodes so keep that in mind two i'm filming this uh, a few hours after being in a car crash where my car was totaled on the highway so if i seem a bit off or if uploads are a bit weird over the next couple weeks, that is why. Don't worry, I am okay. No one was hurt uh, in the car crash. My car is just totaled and um, having to figure out some life stuff right now. So the Critical Role community, for being as crazy big as it has, because the Critical Role community has really grown exponentially over the last couple of years, by and by, the, the Critical Role community is one of the most positive, best communities online that I've ever been a part of. That being said, it's not perfect, as right now, as we speak, there is a war being waged by two sides for the soul of the Critical Role community. I'm talking about the haters versus the stands. A tale as old as time. Some say that these two groups and factions have been fighting with each other since humans developed language. Now, this problem is not something unique to the Critical Role community. Far from it. Any community that is large enough and online will have a kind of split, a divide, especially among the hardcores within the fan base. Let me reiterate, the majority of the fan base of Critical Role is great. They're perfectly awesome people. They don't fall into these two categories. These are the two extremes. I want to make that clear. Because the Critical Role community is no exception to these rules and to this war, especially when controversial events happen within the community and within the game, like the death of Laudna and everything that happened in Campaign 3, Episode 33 and 34. A lot of people just weren't happy. See, the shared division of this fan base is absolutely mind-blowing to me at times. Let's take the haters for example. You see, the Critical Role hater comes in many forms or evolutions. For example, the rules lawyer. Isn't she supposed to have advantage on that? The armchair DM. Seriously, is, is this all going to be happening in their heads or something? This can't be happening. It doesn't make sense for them to have to up against such an OP NPC at this level. The drama stir. <laughs> I'm not reviewing my sub for this. Now the three best characters in the season are dead. And the noob player, just to name a few. It's funny because this is a common take in the Critical Role community. Apparently a lot of people are convinced that a good portion of the people who watch the game live in Twitch chat have never played a game of D&D in their lives. And when I see comments like this, it really does make me wonder. Any community or fan base or any kind of art form is always going to have its haters. There's always going to be people out there who criticize it, some of it legitimately, a lot of it for not legitimate reasons or just in a not constructive way. The rules lawyer who obsesses over the rules in Critical Role and rules is written in D&D &D and who obsessively posts about how Matt isn't doing things right really isn't helpful in any way. There is a very obvious difference between constructive criticism and just hate or criticism for no reason. You see, this is where the stands come in because the stands have an inability to divide between constructive criticism and hate. To these people, any criticism at all of Critical Role is just straight up hate and they should stop. The amount of comments that I see on Reddit, in Twitch chat, on Twitter, about people who say that you can't criticize Critical Role because you should just feel blessed to watch it. Or people who say, this is their game, so they can play it and do it however they want. You should just be happy to watch it. Now, I agree. D&D is a beautiful thing. Everyone plays it differently, and it's all valid. My game that I personally would run would be different from the game that you personally would run, would be different from the way that Matt runs his game, would be different from the way that Brennan runs his game. All of these games are 
valid in their own way. At the end of the day, roleplay is a very personal thing, um, and there is no correct definition of roleplay or how to do it. However, this statement does not exclude critical role and the actors or Matt or anybody, the production team, from constructive criticism. This is a show that they put on for our entertainment. Yes, it is their personal friend game. I, I agree with you there. But it has become so much more than that now. We can't just ignore the cameras, the thousands of viewers, and the insane amount of money that these people have made. Now, before you get all uprising in the comment section, I believe that they deserve this money as the product that they put on is extremely entertaining. I mean, I'm a fan, guys. I've been watching since day one, and I've been obsessed with day one. But this does not mean that we cannot criticize these guys. For example, a big common talking point has been the fate of Laudna on Reddit especially. What will happen to Laudna? A lot of people are concerned that Matt could maybe basically deuce ex machina, no pun intended, by bringing Keyleth of Vox Machina in, resurrect Ladna. Now, a lot of the fan base, me included, would have a problem with this. Yes, it is their game, and if they did it, you know, at the end of the day, that is up to Matt and I guess the choices of the players, but it really would kind of go against every single thing that makes critical role critical role, in my opinion. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you there. I just want to interrupt the video real quick to let you know that this video and other videos like it are sponsored and supported by you. Yes, you, the audience. You guys, by watching, liking, subscribing, supporting me on Patreon, or donating me directly, make these videos possible. So thank you all. Recently, my car was totaled in a car crash, and my life is kind of uh, completely flipped upside down right now. I'm having to figure out how to get to my normal J job and do the things that uh, I need to do to survive in life. Your guys' support has really helped me out a lot, both financially and emotionally, so I do appreciate it. Again, if you want to help support these videos and continue to make them possible, why don't you like, comment, and subscribe, share the video to your friends, or consider going and supporting me on Patreon. As well, recently, I started a second channel, Dr. Novus. If you enjoy the strange, the spooky, and the unexplained in storytelling format, then Dr. Novus is the perfect place for you. Why don't you check it out? Okay, let's get back to the video, shall we? I should be able to express this opinion without getting responses saying you should just be happy to watch the game any way they play the game is valid. Again, this is not your little brother's home game. This is a game streamed to thousands of people. This is a channel who brings in huge sums of revenue and produces mass works of media. They're in a public space, so they can be criticized in a public way. Now, not all criticisms are equal. We've already established that the haters are going to hate for no reason. People love to hate on Matt for reasons that I just don't understand. Obviously, there's a lot of really overinvested fans out there who express themselves in super odd ways. At the end of the day, though, guys, while it is their personal D&D friend campaign, there's really no difference between this and watching Game of Thrones. And now, I know it's not as simple as that. Obviously, D&D is much more multifaceted and complex than, you know, just recording a show like uh, Game of Thrones. These are personal characters, personal investment. It's personal acting. It's improv acting. It's kind of from the heart. It's very personal in a way. I understand all of that. I just hate it when I go on to Reddit or Twitter or I look even in Twitch chat and I see... People who get so, so mad and upset that someone is criticizing their show and they just think that they should not be allowed to do it at all. I understand there's a lot of dickheads out there who say some really dumb stuff about Critical Role. Just watch with Twitch chat. You will see these people. But equally, the stupid responses that go along with these things to counter these stupid critiques are even more stupid and don't make our fan base look good. We should be able to be self-reflective. We should be able to criticize these people who we hold to high standards. This is the give and take of a fan base of a community. While this is their personal game and from their home game, this game and streaming it completely changed all of these people's lives. Critical Role is now a massive media company with millions of dollars to play with. It's not as simple as just a group of nerdy ass voiced actors anymore as much as we wouldn't love it to be. This isn't the geek and sundry days anymore, guys. Like, this is a big, big thing. At the end of the day, me personally, as a long-term fan, I just want what's best for the community and for the show. I hate echo chambers. I hate seeing echo chambers 
being fostered. And like I said, this is a very small sect of the Critical Role fan base that is the uh, hate for no reason versus the eternal love for no reason. Ultimately, this is a pretty small problem as majority of the fans are just happy with what they get and they just express their opinions. But as a community, I think we should really strive to do better in the quality of our criticism that we give. I'm looking at you, rules lawyer, couch DMs, and in the way we engage with ideas and criticism that we don't like. I'm looking at you, stands. Ultimately, again, I want what's best for the show and for the community, and I think we should be able to engage with healthy criticism of the show or even unhealthy criticism of the show in a constructive manner instead of just trying to shut everything down because this is their D&D game. They're going to play it how you like it and you should just sit back, shut up, enjoy it and feel privileged to be along for the ride. Like, Would we really give any other entertainment form of media this pass? I don't think so. Let me know your thoughts about the grand war between the stands and the haters for the soul of the Critical Role community. Do you guys do you agree with me? Do you think this is a problem or do you think I'm overblowing it a little? As always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all for your continued support. It really does mean a lot to me, especially in uh, really crazy financial times like the one I'm in now. As always, I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Peace, love. Adieu.